We begin today on the third Sunday of Lent in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The grace and peace of God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. My brothers and sisters, let us now acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the saint of liturgy. We pray together. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words and what I have done and what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. O God, author of every mercy and of all goodness, who in fasting, prayer, and almsgiving have shown us a remedy for sin, look graciously on this confession of our loneliness, that we who are bowed down by our conscience may always be lifted up by your mercy. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Exodus. In those days, God delivered all these commandments. I, the Lord, am your God, who brought you out of the land of Egypt, that place of slavery. You shall not have other gods besides me. You shall not take the name of the Lord your God in vain. For the Lord will not leave unpunished the one who takes his name in vain. Remember to keep holy the Sabbath day. Honor your father and your mother, that they may live have long life in the land of which the Lord your God has given you. You shall not kill. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not bear false witness against your neighbor. You shall not covet your neighbor's house. You shall not cover your neighbor's wife, nor his male or female slave, or his ass or ox, or anything else that belongs to him. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, Jews demand signs and Greeks look for wisdom. But we proclaim Christ crucified, a stumbling block to Jews and foolishness to Gentiles. But to those who are called Jews and Greeks alike, Christ, the power of God and the wisdom of God. For the foolishness of God is wiser than human wisdom, and the weakness of God is stronger than human strength. The Word of the Lord. Jesus was telling them 
about what was going to happen when he was comparing out the temple when they said the temple took you know, all these years to build and in three days you're going to rebuild it well he was talking about himself about what he was doing and how important it was for him to have the resurrection and how the resurrection was so important for him and yet they really didn't understand what he was saying i think it's important for us to realize how important the resurrection is in our lives, that Jesus represents new life for us, new life for us to follow him, new life through the cross, new life for knowing that the resurrection is promised to all of us who firmly believe in Jesus Christ. Now, there was some doubt, as we saw in that second reading, from the Gentiles, that, you know, that they did not, that was a stumbling block for them, for the, some Jews, and it says for the foolish Gentiles. They couldn't understand the resurrection. Well, the resurrection for us is what we are all about. If it wasn't for the resurrection of Jesus, we'd still be waiting for the Messiah. But Jesus rose. He gives us a new life, and he tells us to follow him faithfully, to keep the commandments that we just heard, to follow that new commandment that he has given us and to live the best life we possibly can. Sometimes those tasks for us are difficult, difficult to put into practice. But that challenge is what Lent is all about. Because I think these 40 days of Lent challenge us as Catholic Christian people to try to live a good life, to seek reconciliation, to ask the Lord for strength and for guidance, and to reach out to those who are in need, our brothers and sisters, for whatever you do for them, you're doing for the Lord. So today, as we ponder the scriptures, think about the Ten Commandments. Think about those two new commandments that Jesus has given us, and look at the cross of Jesus. Is that cross brings it all together. All of our sin, all of our lot of things in our lives, Jesus took upon himself on that cross. And as a result of that cross, we have new life, we have forgiveness, and we firmly believe in the resurrection of the dead and new life with Jesus Christ. Together we say the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. We now bring our needs and the needs of the world before our merciful Father. For the Church, may the Holy Spirit strengthen her in teaching God's law and spirit and in truth. Let us pray to the Lord. Glory to God our prayer. For God our leaders, may God inspire the creation of policies that follow His commandments, especially that of respect for human dignity and life. Let us pray to the Lord. Glory to God our prayer. For those suffering any type of disease or affliction, may Christ the Divine Physician bring them comfort and healing. Let us pray to the Lord. Glory to hear our prayer. For all of us who make up these parishes, that we always keep these holy buildings of a living temple of the risen Christ. Let us pray to the Lord. Glory to hear our prayer. For our newly ordained priests in thanksgiving for their ordination, and that their first year of service in our diocese will be fruitful, 
Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Our beloved dad, thank Christ who died for us, welcome them to eternal life. Especially Donna, Mary, and Mary Kay and Swerdy, who had their funeral services this past week. And for all of them, remember at this mass, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all the intentions in the parish, we prepare prayer for your own personal intentions, which you add in silence. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Merciful Father, you love the world so much that you gave us your only Son. With confident in your love for us, we ask that you hear these prayers and grant them through Christ our Lord. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. 
Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, Jesus took bread, and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. When supper was ended, Jesus took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me.
in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you all. Divine plan 
and created the family as a special sign of your love. Your son Jesus walked among us in the family of Mary and Joseph. He created a home in which the Word of God was revered, obeyed, and lived, where they grew in wisdom and grace, and gave of themselves unselfishly to God, their family, and others. With the Holy Family as our mother, help us to keep you as the center of our lives and reflect our relationship with you in our homes. Bless and protect each of us, our families and our parish, all members of God's family. Send your peace upon us. And grant us the grace to serve you and each other, that in doing so, we may provide glory to you. Prayer to St. Michael. Holy Michael, the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do you, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the divine power, thrust into hell Satan and all other evil spirits who wander through the world seeking the ruin of souls. Let us pray. As we receive the pledge of things yet hidden in heaven and are nourished while still on earth with the bread that comes down from on high, we humbly entreat you, O Lord, that what is being brought about in us in mystery may come to a true completion through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless you. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is at the Thanks be to God. Have a nice day, everyone.